gentlemen, this is Ken Delmar welcoming you to the Alan Young Show, featuring our singing star, B. Wayne, the music of Van Steeden, and starring Alan Young. Thank you, Ken, and good evening, friends. Say, Kenny, uh, where do you think I went last night? Huh? Huh? The store club. The store club? Uh, How did you happen to go there? Well, last night the lady next door had a baby, so I ran out of my apartment, hopped in a cab, and I said, follow that stork. Uh, and the <laughs> led you right to the front door of the store club. No, not the front door. He had to use the delivery entrance. <laughs> Oh, that's the first time I'd ever been to that place. Well, how do you know it was the stork club? All the waiters were standing around on one foot. <laughs> well, Kenny, no sooner did I check my hat and the head waiter came up to me and said, Good evening, I have a pleasure, Mr. Webster. Webster? What made him think your name was Webster? I was carrying a dictionary under my arm. <laughs> well, why did you bring a dictionary to the stork club? I hate to eat alone. <laughs> Kenny, I've, uh, I've never been to such a swanky place. The hat check girl looked like Marlene Dietrich, the flower girl looked like Betty Grable, and Girl. What did she look like? An ashtray. <laughs> well, Kenny, I finally got a table, and I sat down, ordered myself some guinea hen under glass. Oh, boy, how was it, Alan? The guinea hen was swell, but the glass was very tough. Alan, you didn't eat the glass. I certainly did. <laughs> of course, you'll never guess what I had for dessert. What? Some Rex. But then... <laughs> You should have saved that gag <laughs> Indefinitely But then, Kenny, the most uh, wonderful thing happened I'd finished my meal Look up, and there, across the room Sat Hedy Lamar. Hedy Lamar. Yeah, and she must have known who I was Because she sent the waiter over to ask me for a dance She did? Yeah, and he was a pretty good dancer for a waiter, too <laughs> Well, Alan, it, it's not like Nightclub, you must have had some reason Well, I, I did, Kenny I, I was lonely See, I... I missed my girl. Alan, I didn't know you had a girl. Why not? My mother had a boy. <laughs> I mean, sure, sure, I have a girl, sure. <laughs> Last week, I went back to my hometown of Milldale. I ran to my old sweetheart, Mary Ann. Gee, we, we sat on the swing on the front porch. Well? <laughs> <laughs> so the love bug has bitten Alan Young. He has? Get to my other. Oh, oh. Yes, yes, he has, Kenny. Mary Ann and her mother are coming here to pay me a visit tonight, and well, I'd appreciate it if you'd give me a build-up, eh? Okay, Alan. Yeah. yeah Ooh, uh, that must be them now. Yeah. Don't forget, Kenny. Make me seem important. Yeah, leave it to me, Alan. Yeah, okay. Yes? Is uh, this the Alan Young clam bake? <laughs> yes, it is. Well, I want to see Mr. Young. Madam, nobody can see Alan Young without a ticket. Ticket? Who does he think he is, Eddie Cantor? <laughs> now, look here, greasy boy. I want to see Alan Young, and I... Lady, I'm sorry. You can't come in without a ticket. Now, go away before I slug you. Oh, oh. Wait a minute, Kenny. You're overdoing it. Come in, Mrs. Grimes. Hello, Mary Ann. Hello, Alan. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, Mrs. Grimes. Kenny didn't know who you were. No, he didn't. Yeah. I'll bet you to it, you no good, stupid, fat-headed, naive, loud mouth bum. <laughs> naive? <laughs> Grimes, you're talking to a man who's seen life from the balcony of a burlesque show. You call me naive. Oh, Alan. Hello, Mary Ann. You glad to see me? Oh, yes. Uh, notice anything different about me, Mary Ann? No. Take a good look. No, I don't see anything different. You? Wearing my cufflinks backwards. <laughs> now, look here, sloppy socks. <laughs> You got me to bring Mary Ann down here, and what for? Well, Mrs. Grimes, since Mary is about to settle down to connubial bliss, if you'll pardon the expression, I uh, thought you ought to know what I do for a living. Well, what do you do for a living? I'm a comedian. A comedian. Huh! That's a laugh. Hmm. If it is, it's the best one I got tonight. <laughs> well, being a radio... Well, being a radio comedian isn't my idea of honest work. Any man who marries my daughter must have a steady, sensible job. But you don't understand, Mrs. Grimes. Or may I call you Gravel Gertie? 
I'm, I'm doing fine. Why, there's, there's no telling where I can go with my career. There is telling, but I'm a lady. <laughs> now, remember, until you get yourself a decent, respectable job, you can't marry my daughter. Come along, Mary Ann. You go on ahead, Mother. I'll be right with you. I just want to say a word to Alan. All right. So long, pelican puss. Gee, Mary Ann, your mother's such a manly little fellow, isn't she? <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad you stayed here to talk to me. This is the first chance we've had to be alone. Yes. Yeah. Been looking forward to this all evening. Me too. Mm. Mary Ann, you like to hold hands? Oh, I'd love to. Mm. Do you mind if I gave you a little hug? I wish you would. Mm. How about a kiss? Okay. Gee, I hate a girl who plays hard to get. <laughs> Tell me, Mary Ann, do you feel the same way as your mother does about me? No. I think you're human. Hmm. Well, it's about, uh, about marrying a radio comedian. Well, Alice, I had hopes of marrying a man who does more exciting work. Like a newspaper man, for instance. What's exciting about delivering newspapers? <laughs> I mean, a newspaper reporter. Oh, I see a reporter. Gosh, that's an idea. I can just see myself now dashing into the White House. How do you do, Mr. President? I'm Alan Young of the Gazette. I want a statement from you on the... <laughs> well guarded, isn't he? <laughs> Marianne, if I become a newspaper reporter, will you marry me? Yes, I will. Gee, the next time you see me, I'll be working for a newspaper. You'll hear me yelling, Stop the presses! Stop the presses! Why? I got my pants caught in the wheels. <laughs> and now, Marianne, I, I bid you farewell. Or as we newspaper men say, quote, unquote. <laughs> Don't worry, Mary Ann, I'll get myself a job as a newspaper reporter. See you later. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our glamorous singing star, B. Wayne, will revive for you that swell old tune, Music Makes Me. I like music, old or new, but music makes me do the things I never should do. I like music, sweet or blue, but music makes me do things that I never should do. My self-control was something to brag about, now it's a gag about town. The things I do, I never forgive them for just when I'm living them down. I hear music, then I do. For music makes me do the things I never should do. It makes me lose my dignity. It makes me lose my poise. Some folks call it music, but my folks call it noise. I like music, old or new, but music makes me do the things I never should do. I like music, sweet or but music makes me do things that I never should do. My self-control was something to brag about, now it's a gag about town. The things I do are never forgiven. For just when I'm living them down. I hear music and I'm through. For when I hear that cue, it makes me want to do all the things I never should. Here's 
where I try to get myself a job as a newspaper reporter. And I think I picked the best paper in town, the New York Daily Blade, the only paper you can shave with. <laughs> well, here's the editor's office. Now I've got to approach I think I'll be breezy, like the reporters in the movies. <clears throat> Come in. Well, what can I do for you? Quiet, chief. Meet the best little reporter in the business. Breezy Young. Hot news, flash news. Right in there pitching all the time. That's me. Have a cigar. What's cooking? I'm a new star reporter. See? Fifty bucks a week and I'll breeze right to work. Is it a deal? <laughs> well, that breeze died down suddenly. But I'm not discouraged. I'll try again. Come in. Hiya, Chief. I'm back again. Who are you? Don't you remember? I'm the guy who went... No other sound effects man can make that statement. <laughs> now, Mr. Editor, I uh, came here to ask... Uh, just a moment. Hello? Who's this? Hogan? I sent Riley out to track down Killer Scarpetti. What happened to him? Bumped him off. Well, you get the story, Hogan. Now, what were you saying, young fellow? Mr. Editor, I came here to ask you... Uh, just a minute. Hello? Who's this? Schwartz? What happened to Hogan? Scarpetti got him, too? Stay on the story. Now, what did you say you want? Mr. Editor, I came here to ask you something. Uh, just a second. <laughs> Hello? Who's this? Scarpetti. What happened to Schwartz? You got him, too? Listen, Scarpetti, you've killed nine of my reporters already, but we won't give up. I'm down there right away. <laughs> she do many of your reporters get bumped off by gangsters? Dozens of them every day. Hmm. Now, uh, you came in here to ask me something. Yes, yes, I did. Well, go ahead. Mr. Editor, do you think John's other wife is really happy? <laughs> oh, you can't fool me, my boy. You came in here to get a job as a reporter. Reporter? <laughs> Who, me? Yes, you did, and I'm going to assign you to the Scar Patty story. Oh, no, thanks. I'd much rather be a human interest or interview pretty girls. Bah, pretty girls are a dime a dozen. Yeah? Here, I've been using my dimes to buy ice cream sodas. <laughs> well, when do I go? You start tomorrow. But remember, a newspaper man's life is dedicated to public service. Yes, sir, and I know that service pays off in the long run. I used to be a movie usher, and every day a little old man used to come in, and I'd help him find a seat and take care of his umbrella and his overcoat, and after the show, I'd help him on with his overcoat and give his umbrella and help him up the aisle. That went on every week for five years. And then one day, that... That little old man died. And left you all his money? Nah, he was just an old pest. <laughs> but, uh, I'll get right to work, Mr. Editor. I'll be your best reporter. Uh, good. Uh, of course you have a portable typewriter. No, sir, but I know where I can get one. Where? Breen Bracker's department store. <laughs> I hope he has a portable typewriter. Mr. Breen Bracker. Oh, Mr. Breenbracker. Oh, here I am. You would have to walk in now. Why, were you doing something important? Yes, I was in the back of the store lacing up my wife's corset. <laughs> Must be something wrong with it. Why? No matter how tight I lace it, I still buzz in the front. <laughs> now, uh, what do you want? Mr. Breenbracker, I've got a new job. As a vacuum cleaner would say... Eureka. <laughs> guess, guess what kind of a job it is, Mr. Breenbracker. Does it fit your personality? Perfectly. You're a contact man for a cut-rate undertaker. No, no. <laughs> I got a job on a newspaper. What are you, tug-of-war editor for Yank? Of course not. <laughs> I'm working on one of the big metropolitan new papers. Il Progresso? <laughs> Il Progresso? That's an Italian newspaper. What made you think of that? I always read Italian newspapers. Why? I've got a lot of money invested in spaghetti. Why did you invest your money in spaghetti? My uncle died and left me 100,000 meatballs, nosy. <laughs> now, did you come in here to buy something, or can I go back and finish touching up my hair? Certainly I want to buy something. I want to buy a typewriter. Have you got a priority? No. The rest of this transaction will be conducted in a whisper. <laughs> I've got one typewriter left. It'll cost you nine dollars. 
Only nine dollars? Yes, the letter L was missing. Well, how does it write? Owsy. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it, Mr. Breenbacker. Where is it? I need a typewriter for my work as a newspaper reporter. Oh, I hate reporters. Before my wife Emily married me, she used to go around with a very famous newspaper reporter. Uh, Pulitzer? No. Greeley from the Star? No. Then who was he? Peeling from the Sun. <laughs> Well, how did it happen that Mrs. Greenbracker married you instead of him? Well, she had to choose between him, the flashy, fast-moving guy, and me, the slow, steady plugger. The hare and the tortoise. And she chose you. Yes, yeah, she thought I looked cute with a shell on my back. <laughs> Gee, you've led an interesting life, Mr. Greenbracker. You don't know the half of it. I remember one time when I was 19 years old... Can I old... see the typewriter now? Yeah, yeah, in a minute. Well, I, I was 19 years old, as I recall it, and you I... told me you had a typewriter. I know one. Anyway, I was 19 years old, and this blonde manicurist must have been at least 35. So Mr. I... Mr. Greenbracker, the typewriter, the typewriter? The typewriter, the typewriter. <laughs> Instead of worrying about a typewriter, a boy of your age should be out chasing girls. Well, I... <laughs> I've got my career to think about. Isn't he unappetizing? <laughs> Typewriter's right here on the table. Okay, I'll just sit down in this chair and try it out. Don't lean back. There's an electric fan right behind you. Don't worry, Mr. Breenbrecker. Watch out for that fan. Please, Mr. Breenbrecker, I know what I'm doing. (laughs) Glad. (laughs) Now, do you want the typewriter? Yes, sir. Here's your $9. Boy, I got a bargain. Take another look at the typewriter. (laughs) Hey, you cheated me. You said this typewriter was missing only one letter, or whatever it is. <laughs> now that I look at it, there are only two letters in the whole machine, B and O. What can I do with a typewriter with the letters B and O? Write fan mail to Life Boy Soap. Oh, good day, Mr. Good Green. day, Mr. Gentlemen, here's our glamorous singing star, B. Wayne, to sing for you, Amor. Amor, Amor, Amor. This word so sweet that I repeat means I adore you. Amor, Amor, my love. Deny this heart that I have placed before you. I can't find another word with meaning so clear. My lips try to whisper sweeter things than you hear. But somehow or other, nothing sounds quite so dear as this soft, caressing word I know. Amore, amore. My love, when you're away, day and nights are lonely. Amor, amor, my love, make life divine. Say you be mine and love me only. I can't find another word with meaning. My lips try to whisper sweeter things than your ear, 
But somehow or other, nothing sounds quite so dear as this soft, caressing word I know. Writer, Mr. Editor, I'm all ready to go to work as a reporter. You got here, young. I've been called away on a very important assignment. I want you to take over as editor temporarily. Here, use my desk. Gee, thank you. Hmm, what a great big desk. Ten buttons, and I gotta hold up my pants with a band aid. <laughs> I wonder what this first button's for. Well, I'll just push it. Hmm, water cooler. Well, what's this second one? <laughs> Dixie cups. Well, I'll, I'll try this last one here. You rang for me, Chief? You rang for me, Chief? You rang for me? You rang for me, Chief? <laughs> oh, yes. I did? I mean, I did. I did, yes, yes. Uh, I want to see you all, fellas. Uh, I just want to say, fellas, uh, this is a newspaper, and, uh, uh, well, I guess that about winds it up, fellas. Come on, you're supposed to be the editor. What's on your mind? Well, it's very simple. I know, but what's on it? <laughs> look, if you don't think I can handle this job, just look into my eyes, buddy. Look deep into my eyes. Okay, I'm looking into your eyes. Blue, aren't they? <laughs> now, I want to tell you something, fellas. It's very important. It's about spies, see? In giving out news, you never know who's listening, so you've got to be careful what you say. Now, listen to me. I beg your pardon. There's a convoy. Over on the desk. You guys listen to me, see? <laughs> listen and you learn how to protect vital information. How many are they shipping? 600. You never know how important, how important these things are, so be careful every minute. And uh, when are they being shipped out? 10 o'clock tonight. Now, don't... Uh... Uh, thank you, my herr. You're welcome. Now... Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. <laughs> Now, just follow me, fellas, and you won't go far wrong. Hey, Young, that guy who just left, didn't he look kind of suspicious? Ah, how could you tell? He was wearing a mask. <laughs> now, men, fellas, go out and bring back some news. I've got to make some changes around here. I'm not satisfied. I'm going to speak to my assistant editor here. Oh, stop! <laughs> stop! He's in conference. <laughs> uh, come in. Hello, Mr. Young. Well, if it isn't the man who writes our weather forecasts. Say, how are chances for a shower? Go ahead and take one if you need it. <laughs> that guy's become unbearable since we put mercury in his thermometer. Well, I'll get some news. Oh, Alan. Alan. Oh, what is it, Mary Ann? I've got an idea for your paper. Huh? My mother wants to write a column full of real homely philosophy. Well, she's got the face for it. No. <laughs> Now, Alan, let's leave my father, mother's face out of this tonight. Why tonight? Looks like it was left out too long last night. You can stay after and write that line 500 times. <laughs> but that's not... That's not getting me any news. Hello, Editor Young speaking. Mr. Young. Uh, this is Japanese soldiers speaking. Americans attack him, but I am not afraid. Banzai! What happened? Banzai! Very <laughs> oh, good. They shot him between Toe and Joe. Well, I still haven't got any news, and the paper goes to press in a few minutes. Uh, hello? Hey, Chief! A man down here has just been murdered. What about it? I'm innocent, I tell you! Innocent! <laughs> they can't pin a thing on me. Alan, you've got to make a go of this job for my sake. I know, Marianne. I'm, I'm doing my best, but nothing ever happens around here. Oh, come in. 
I beg your pardon. I'm the ambassador from Patagonia. Do you mind if I jump out of your window? Not at all. Thank you. I guess it's just because some days are quieter than others, that's all. Pardon me, I'm the district attorney. Do you mind if I shoot myself in here? Uh, not at all. Thank you. Mm. Oh. This just happens to be one of those days, that's all. After all, you can't expect things to happen. Excuse me, Editor Young. May I use your telephone? Certainly, go right ahead. Hello, Midwood Hospital? This is Mr. Beamish. How is my wife? What? Seven? Wow! Mr. Young, my wife has just had seven babies. This outdoes the quintuplets. What do you say about that? You owe me a nickel for that call. <laughs> you don't understand, Mr. Young. My wife has just had seven babies at the Midwood Hospital. Midwood Hospital? Yes! That's a ten-cent call. <laughs> Young, what way is this to run a newspaper? Well, what's the matter, Mr. Ed? Did you job? Certainly not. Look at the headlines the other papers in this town have. And look at the headline you put on our paper. John Schultz is a nice man. Who is John Schultz? He's my butcher. He promised me a pound of steak if I put his name in the paper. Young, you're fired. Do you hear me? Fire. Milkman, those bottles quiet. Can't use that jive on my milk diet. So, milkman, keep those bottles quiet. Been jumping on the swing shift all night, turning out my quota. All right, now I'm beat right down to the side, and I've got to dig myself some not so milkman, keep those bottles quiet. All oh, the noise of the river, I don't mind it, but the guy with the whiskers has a lot behind it, but I can't keep punching with that victory crew, when you're making me punchy with that bottled move. I want to give my all if I'm a I give it, but I gotta get my shot I if I'm gonna rid it So we'll bail out But without a milk barrage Cause it's unpatriotic It's a sabotage Milkman, stop that riot But if you can't lullaby it Jumping on the swing shift all night Turning out my quota all right Now I'm beat Well, i Oh, milkman, keep those bottles quiet Now, I'm you politely gate If you don't, you'll be in a terrible state So, milkman... Beautiful night tonight, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. You're, you're not mad at me because I got fired from that newspaper job? No, I'm not mad at you. Yeah. I mean as much to you as I ever did? Of course. Good. Well, I guess I have the right to ask you a question. Of course, Alan. What is it? Uh, Mary Ann. I'm listening, Alan. I hope you'll say yes. What's the question, Alan? Mary Ann, would you like to buy a used portable typewriter? <laughs> On behalf of B, Ken, Peter, myself, in fact, all of us, we want to thank you for being with us tonight. 